It is another exciting edition of Q Sports. I'm Mubutu Gajaga and thank you for joining us. The Gambia Football Federation First Division League has kick-started and is now into its week three. We've seen so many issues concerning decisions being taken by referees as well as at some point you think the referee was right or wrong and as well as they're faced with the situation of taking decisions spontaneously that is on the spot if there is a foul if there is a penalty situation or if there was a tackle or not and also they are faced with situations where fans would be surrounding the perimeter fence especially at the national technical training center joining me in the studio is retired referee Bubakar Jalo who is also part of the Gambia referees committee um, Bubakar welcome to the studio uh, thank you very much once again Mr. Gajaga for the second invitation, uh, I'm really pleased to come over and we try to discuss some issues as far as uh, football is concerned. I represent the GFF, you see I'm in the referees committee, I'm in the referees association and I'm a technical instructor. So I think it is, I'm the, I can be the right person to explain some of these things. Yeah. Uh, let's get on with the discussion proper because um, I've watched a series of matches, I've watched a match situation where I've seen that the referee have wasted too much time when it comes to the restart of play mm -hmm. um, when there is a foul and the player is not seriously injured he does not even need the services of the physios to come into the field and give him treatment mm -hmm. and the team that has had the advantage at the time mm -hmm. want to quick it play yeah. that's want to get on to with the fast play mm -hmm. and the referee said stop 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 you need to take the ball again it it kind of derails the flow of the game flow of the game um it seems you are talking of two issues uh, the, the re, uh, delaying the restart of play and uh, the time wasting maybe player falling down said this injured and is not injured yeah for players faking injury that is a big problem for referees because what they will advise is because you the referee you are not a doctor so if somebody said, I'm injured, is lying on the ground, it's difficult for you to ignore. Because at the end of the day, if you ignore, if the person dies, you are going to be responsible. So those are some of the things why referees, if a player falls down and he did not get up for some time. But the law stated clearly, it says, if a player is slightly injured, the referee does not need to stop the game. Play has to go on until maybe there is a foul or there is a throw or a goal kick. Then you can come and attend and look at the referee and ask. And the first, what you do is the moment you reach at this player who is injured, the question is simple: Are you can you play on or you cannot play? Can you walk to the touch line or the goal line or you need a stretcher? If you say I can walk, then the referee will not need to call. The medics, maybe only the team doctor will come and he will walk with the player to the touch line. You see, like what you are saying, that one is a very difficult aspect for referee to know if somebody is injured or not injured. But what you can do, you can, if you realize, you, are, you know that the injury is not a life-threatening injury, you have to allow play to go on. Play to go on. Yes, until the ball goes out of play or another foul happens, then you can attend to the player. But if it is a life-threatening injury, you cannot continue, you have to stop. In situations where there is an incident, let's mm. say a concoction, yeah, concoction. two players, yes. their heads Head, clash, yes, yes. and then the referee comes and look at both players, mm. and one of them is actually being a joke to have committed the foul, yes. and then the person needs to be booked. Yes. Normally referees would wait until when you get up on your feet, mm -hmm. even if you are going to be on a stretcher, mm. to give you a yellow, yellow card. card. Yes. How does the yellow card Come situation in. yes. comes into that Yeah, effect? because what happened is like, uh, when this type of foul, like is aerial situation that you are talking of, if the ball is coming, the referee will look at who is in possession, who has come purposely to play the ball. This guy, is he coming to play the ball? You understand? So if there is that head class, because I saw one video that you sent me, I saw it there with Mbaifai and somebody else. You understand? So when it is concussion, the law stated you have to stop because that is life threatening. You have to stop until, because the doctors come and, you know, when you concussion, it means you are unconscious, you don't know what is happening. But that does not stop from you giving a caution. What the law is saying, 
if that happens, you make sure that you give this player a caution before the person leaves the field of play. So even if he's on a stretcher, if he's on a stretcher, yeah, you can book him on a stretcher. On the stretcher. Yes, that you can book him on the stretcher, that he is he is cautioned, because sometimes <laughs> the player may go out and he will not, he will he may forget or something happen and he may not come back. In the same concussion situation, mm. we don't have the luxury of sometimes mm. having um, Especially? two jerseys uh -huh. for each player with yeah. the same number shirt. Yes. If a player is injured, and I understand there are blood stains, mm -hmm. like let's say, for instance, a white jersey, mm -hmm. and the blood is easily visib mm -hmm. visible, mm -hmm. normally you are told to go out of the field of play. Yeah. And then maybe if it requires to change that jersey, mm -hmm. or maybe to wash it or something like yeah. that, if you mm -hmm. don't have the luxury of putting on another jersey, yeah, yeah, you know, when there is blood stains on the jersey, yeah. what happens? Yeah, and what happens is, you know, like, uh, we always take these things, we'll, for example, what suits us. In normal situation, professional football, you know, when you are, when teams are going, they always go with two in case. But here, <laughs> you know, so if you want to ask a player, maybe some teams have two, they go with two, maybe. But most of the teams have only one jersey. So if that happens, the improvisation we do is to wash it, to wash the blood on it. And the player co continues. The player comes and play again. Because if you stop the player from you, the referee, you said, you are not going to play because you have blood on this thing. For you will not play totally. If the team loses now, who is going to approve? It's the referee. They will all come back to the referee again. And maybe FIFA or CAF will say, you don't use common sense. You see? So you, sometimes some of these things you have to know how to manage it. That is the management aspect of, of, of refereeing. You have to know how to deal with this type of situation. Like in the Gambia here, most of the time, it's the worst. Maybe the doctor or whatever, they will wash the blood off and, 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 they continue and allow play. the allow player the to, to come play. back yes, into yes, yes. the field. And but play, he cannot yes. continue with blood stain on the side and continue playing, no. I've also watched um, some of the matches where the fans are not relenting in terms of their support, yeah. which is obviously normal when you support it, your football, team, you yeah. cheer them yes. and give courage to your players. Mm -hmm but also putting a lot of pressure on the referee, mm -hmm. calling him by his name, Insulting. insults raining everywhere. Mm -hmm. Those referees have to be very brave enough mm -hmm. and also they have not, not to be in a situation where the, they're kind of being provoked by the opposing fans mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. they want to you know, maybe spoil their game. Mm -hmm. how, how do referees yeah, deal with because, those kinds uh, of situations? Like last time we were discussing about this thing. You see, referee, if you don't have the mental strength to ignore, to forget whatever. Even if you make a mistake in the game, you cannot put your mind on that mistake. Mistake, particular mistake. Yeah, you have to forget and move on. I'm, uh, maybe I'm assessing you. You made a mistake, and you know that I have seen the mistake. If you want to put your mind on that mistake, you will even be seeing fouls. You will not take them. So the fans also, most of them, they will abuse you, say all kind of things for you to make major mistakes. You understand? Some of them come purposely just to make the referee very uncomfortable so that he will not be able to do his job. So if you are the referee, you don't have that mental strength to withstand those type of abuses, he, they will make you to fail. You understand? So the referees are trained and we warn them. You don't have to listen to what somebody is insulting you outside. For me, like, when they insult, I will smile. You know when somebody insults your mother and you smile, he will, not, he will stop. But if they insult you, you also you are angry and you are trying to see, this guy is insulting me. <laughs> Your power remains in the field of, if it is Europe, they can be like, all the seats are numbered, they will send this, they will pick him. Because you don't have to abuse the referee. You don't have to. You understand? You cannot abuse him. If you abuse, if you are caught, you will be sent out of the park or you can be even be taken to court. It's, it's not correct. You cannot do that. But here, people will be doing it, they think that they go scot free Nobody tells them, but you cannot go there and you are insulting the referee's mother continuously. You understand? You are abusing him very seriously. And when legal actions are taken against you, you are going to be a victim. I've also seen situations in mm -hmm. our league matches where in the last minute of the play, mm -hmm. probably that's like the last kick of the game. Yes. Three minutes added time, two minutes, 55 seconds played, and there was an incident. Yes. Penalty uh -huh. or no penalty. And if it is obvious that it's a clear penalty, mm -hmm. sometimes match officials will tend to ignore it because there is going to be tension in the game. Ah. The game is 
one square, like it's one all between the two teams, mm. and you're faced with that kind of a situation. Yeah. And it's an obvious penalty mm. from every angle where you look at it, mm. whether it's a handball situation mm. or there is a clear foul inside the mm. penalty box. Yeah. I think that is the courage. The referees must have courage. Mo they must have the feeling to judge fairly. Because if a referee does that, is it fair to the other team? There is no way that if a penalty happens during the time of the game, even it's left with two seconds, the law stated clearly, even the time is finished and maybe it's the last second, you give a penalty, that penalty, you cannot end the game. That penalty has to be taken. So they know that those type of things can happen. If there is, there is no time when you say, as far as the game is not finished, even it's left with one second. If there is a penalty incident, you have to take it. But that's the courage of the referee. But if you say it is one second or two seconds, I will not give a penalty, you are not fair to the teams. You could don't have to fear. So could it be down to fear in, in those kind of situations? Yeah, you know, sometimes it's psychological. You may not know what the referee is feeling. But you ask, like, if I'm the assessor, I will tell him, look, this, this was a penalty. Did you see it? He say, yes, you know. So some of these things, then he'll tell, look, you cannot co we cannot compromise these things. Give the devil its due. If it is a penalty, give a penalty. If it is not a penalty, not a penalty. But there is nothing like it's the last second or the first second. Penalty is penalty. It's an offense that has a very high degree. So you have to punish. Also, um, there are some of the coaches also who are not happy Maybe. with refereeing decisions yes. while their team is playing okay. against another team. Yes. And kind of remonstrating, mm, making okay. gestures, mm. and also even saying certain harsh, harsh words, words to the yeah, referee. Yeah, yeah. If there is no insult, mm -hmm. does the referee have the right, just because the coach has been complaining too much, to send him off? Yeah, what is happening is like, uh, if you see in the laws of the game, they put in new amendments, and they brought in the issue of the coach. Now the coach, as far as the laws of the game is concerned, is treated like a player. Is given yellow, is given red. You understand? Okay. If he touches well, the where, where does the yellow card come in? Because just for mere complaint, yeah, if, if I look at you, you, you I know say, complain, Bubakar, that decision was wrong. You yeah. should have given me that a, is what a we call, That's what we call dissent. Okay. It's a dissent. It's dissent. It is a way that you are saying, you know, the referee is highly respected. Respected, yes. You understand? So <laughs> a big boss, you cannot stand at the end. You understand? You are telling him those type of things. He's the judge. He's the doing his judgment like you go to court. You cannot tell the judge this is not correct. Mm -hmm. You understand? So the referee also is the judge. There. If you tell the referee, you continuous, uh, maybe not once, they will tell you, okay, my friend, coach, cool down. It's easy. The fourth referee will tell you, take it easy. They will understand. But the moment it happened in the second time, they will know that this is becoming a habit and it's going to make the uh, referee to find very difficult to control the game. So he will come and give you a yellow card that is to warn you what you are doing, you have to stop it. You understand? If you continue, then he will give you red. Then it means you have to leave. Because when you go there as a coach, you are not coaching the referee. Your job is to work on technicalities on your, your, with your team, not to tell the referee what he is doing. The assessor is the one who should talk to the referee because it is a special job you as a coach you don't know what the referee is doing so that is the issue so if you dissent yellow another dissent red but depending on the courage of the referee if he has the courage because some you will see the coach will be doing so many and they leave it you have so many players in the field of play, especially mm -hmm. some who are midfielders or defenders. Mm -hmm. For every maybe two incidents, they commit a foul. Yes. Or maybe they're just uh, very aggressive players. They mm -hmm. hit hard and they mm -hmm. tackle so mm -hmm. much in mm -hmm. the field of play. Mm -hmm. And the person is already on a yellow card. Mm -hmm. And he continues tackling. To, you know, tackling his opponents mm -hmm. every other time. And the supporters and people watching outside yeah, yeah, yeah. feels he should be sent off. He yeah. should be giving a second cooking. Yeah. Yes. And certain referees would allow this person to continue with those fouls. If 
he commits another foul again and again. Mm -hmm. It is until when it is a bookable offense that the person is going to be giving a, a second yellow card no. or he just deserves to be sent off. You see, uh, every foul, like I said here, we have fouls which are careless. We have fouls which are reckless. We have fouls where we see it is using excessive force. You understand? When the foul is careless, it means the foul is a medium, it's a very low minor foul, foul. Yeah, minor one. You understand? Maybe the player was not concentrating and he mistakenly made a foul. But when it is reckless, it is where the player's life is in risk. The tackles, most of the reckless fouls are contact fouls. The contact fouls, now between the reckless and excessive, that's where there is a borderline. You have to look at this foul. Is it reckless? That's where the judgment comes to become a good referee. That's where the problem comes to referees to move forward. This judgment differentiating which foul is not a yellow card, which foul is yellow, which foul is red. You understand? If uh, the law stated, if a player constantly infringes the laws of the game, the player should be cautioned. It doesn't, it doesn't say uh, one or two. It could be two or three, and you give yellow. Because they will, you see, sometimes even big mice, they will tell you, you committed a foul here, you committed a foul here, you committed a foul here. You don't need to make so many fouls in a game. So if what you are saying happens, it means <laughs> the referee has to do something. You cannot allow uh, one player to be making ten fouls in the match. The players must understand what is a foul and what is not a foul. No, uh, they should know that committing fouls is not part of the game. Also, there are some big situations in our mm -hmm. matches where there is already added time mm -hmm. and the fourth official, mm -hmm. you know, showed the board. Yes. And you've already seen three minutes or four minutes added time. Y yes. And out of these four minutes, uh -huh. maybe the referee is fearful, uh -huh. like you talked about courage, uh -huh. but I've seen it just this past week. Uh -huh where in a situation the referee uh, four minutes at a time uh -huh. and then he ended up playing three minutes and he in some situations even just two minutes and then blows the whistle because okay our timings are unofficial the yes. referee's time is the official one time, yes. of course but normally there is only a second or two in between the because once he mm -hmm. pressed his watch mm -hmm. we also you know pressed our mm -hmm. spot watch yes, to make sure that yeah, we, we catch yeah, up with yeah, the time yeah, yeah. but if in a situation where four minutes is added on and the referee plays three minutes, three minutes. and there, there could have been a goal opportunity, opportunity or maybe okay. if he placed the, the rest Yeah, of like the what minute. I said, you know, I don't want to uh, talk about, you know, uh, the, our Gambian referees, what they should have been doing or something like that. Yeah. But the only thing what I know is when it's injury, you are given four minutes injury time. I see no reason why you should play less than four minutes. But the other thing is like the referee's timing and ordinary timing are different. But maybe splits of seconds. Yes, splits of seconds. Yeah. But the usual, this like, I just want to bring this one. If the referee gives three minutes injury, they signal, and there's a stoppage in that three minutes. Minutes, yes. You know that uh, the, the, that stoppage should be added yeah. on top of the three minutes, but it will not be signal. You understand what I mean? Yes. Yes, so it means it will be injury in injury. Mm. Three minutes is the injury time. People must understand. Yeah. The injury time, oh, Johanna. I've seen that on TV. You understand? Yes. Ago. Injury yeah. time, this, you Five understand? Five minutes played, yes. and then it ended up being nine minutes ah. because yeah. there was a. There was an also. incident, but they cannot signal the, this thing twice. The, 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 the added time. You understand? So the added time, it is the, the referee, discretion of the referee. But I can just give you uh, a guideline concerning about this substitution and other things. The, usually they use 30 seconds for substitution, you understand? So if you make, for example, five substitu uh, six substitutions. Fusions. That's three minutes. You, that's three minutes fixed. You understand? At least you should have three minutes. Sometimes I will go and assess, I will see substitution, I will be recording and I see the number, I will tell, look, this is... This and is and sometimes too much time wasting and then you, all you see is just two minutes added on. Or yeah, three minutes added I, I, on. I think those and are... And when you, in your own opinion, mm -hmm. you think it's been up to maybe five minutes. Yeah. So I think, uh, like, what your concern, we are going to, I will, I will also put it to the referees committee and we'll tell the referees that uh, people are complaining 
about this injury time you are adding okay and you make sure that this time is up before you 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 end the game you understand because football even 30 seconds is something 30 seconds is something yeah so that is that is the issue the injury time has to be added if you give three play three during the injury if there is a stoppage that is stoppage in stoppage you have to add but um the referee must have a good timing huh? one watch i don't think some watches one watch can do all but most of the referees will use two the other one will be running like the one you, your watch will be running the other one every time there is he will stop you know there's a natural way when the game stops you don't stop the you don't stop the watch for that like goal kick throw you know <laughs> those ones are natural they they, they they happen in a game that you don't stop you always stop when like an injury happens you understand so those are some of the things yes this time wasting issue look at now the substitution where do they before it has to take you almost 30 seconds to run from the center and you come to where the fourth referee is why did they say now you can use any of the boundaries as exit just to make sure they reduce the time that is wasted you don't need to come to the fourth referee site you can live anywhere and i've seen that it is implemented here you understand so this is because they are trying to manage to make sure that these players play enough time teams have enough time to play so time wasting for a referee is not good the referee must make sure that the agreed time is played the agreed injury time is played if there is injury uh, there is that there is injury during the injury time you have to add it well finally let's talk about mm -hmm. a substitution mm -hmm. which is done during half time half time yes can there be a substitution inside the dressing room when both the referee and the assistant referee is notified like a team has a player that is injured by the close of first half mm -hmm. and then they want to do the substitution yeah the substitution because i've seen that mm -hmm. incident also where mm -hmm. um, a player wants to be substituted on the immediate before even second half restarts mm -hmm. and then the fourth official was kind of um, not agreeing to that it has to be like all the players got inside the field of play and then he signals the referee and the referee pointed to the where the changing is yeah. and then the, the yeah that is, is that, that is that is the way it is done now you can do the administrative aspect that you want to change you understand so if he's coming like you said in the first half and he wants to come in the second half he can come before the game starts the fourth referee will signal the referee to say this guy wants to come you understand then he will, he will but like uh, I think it was happening before you can do substitution from the dress room everything and you just come and continue but now it ha there must be a signal and it should be done uh, when like in, if it is the first half the beginning of the second half then you do the substitution and that's the way it is done for the matches that you've assessed so far mm. how has been um, some of the performances of, of yeah the for the matches that I have I have I access uh, to I access Maudo, I access uh, Marigo, and even yesterday I was telling him the way I see you playing, if you continue like that, then you will, it will be very good for us and it will be very good for you. Maudo also, I w it was at the it was uh, Elite versus Hawks, okay? I think it was four one or something like that. And Maudo also played a very 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 good game. He played a very good game, and I even told him, I told him well, I was really happy. Although there are issues. But that one is not for the television. When we uh, when we went to the stadium, we just try to uh, in house. Yeah, yeah, in house. Just but that is referring matter. It's not about. It does not have effect on the game. Oh, but those are game. technicalities. Yes. You know, sometimes the game can be played. You watch it, and everything is fine. But the technician who is specialized about referring issues will know that so many things referring things happen. You understand when the referee should have done this, he did not do this. He's positioning, he's running. You understand when the counter attack where he was positioned. You know all those things, but that one is not for, you know, it's for the referees, assessor, and the referee, just for his own development. Yeah. Referees for their own development. Mm. That is where we are going to end this discussion. Mm. It has been fantastic mm. uh, getting to talk to Buka Jalo, yeah. retired referee, yeah. now a referee's instructor, and also uh, working at the Gambia Football Federation as yeah. part of their referees yeah. committee. Yeah. It's yeah. been uh, a pleasure. great discussion. Thank you yeah. very much. For Thank you very much, uh, Garaga. I want. I always want to. Because there are sometimes, if you reach certain level, people who made you to reach, you know, it's good that you try to thank them. You see, because I always, there is one guy, 
called Alaji Baji. He's the head of security at GFF. You know, it's a little bit of history. When I was going to school, I used to play in the provinces from Brikamaba. You understand? So when I want to play, he will tell me, no, you are not a good player, but you are a good referee. Yeah, <laughs> good referee. You understand? Yeah. So I have to, uh, you know, he forced me. He will force me. He will say, no, you will not play referee. So I started refereeing, refereeing until this level. So I have to, I cannot forget him. Because he's yes. the one, definitely. So kudos Alajibaji, to Alaji Baji, yeah. a mentor and yeah. also mm -hmm. someone who encourages Ubu mm -hmm. until yeah. where he is where he is today and we say thank you very much for watching this broadcast until we come your way next week keep on sporting and bye for now have a pleasant night